Hi everybody, Phyllis Moore, philosophically speaking. And let's just stretch it out a little bit. Phyllis Mower, lawn mower. Hold that thought. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. Comment as well if you wish. But yeah, if you really stretch my name into two syllables and you become Phyllis Mower, lawn mower, that was my job this week. No, I wasn't a lawn mower. Yeah, I, okay, I was a lawn mower. You know, you can take that two ways. Okay. I mean, I didn't get down there like a, a cow and, and chew the grass and, you know, whatever and have make a meal, but I was on a lawn mower. Um, my husband has a landscape business and he does all kinds of stuff. He does bushes and trees and, you know, um, lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, <laughs> he does all kinds of stuff that I don't do because I'm not a manual labor type type of gal. When I was growing up and my dad would invest in, you know, like he, he bought a farm at one point and so, you know, we had to kind of clear the land and all this stuff and I'd be working out in the house and my dad would say, you know, good exercise would be pulling roots and going out there and, you know, kind of picking up and clearing that land. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Not my thing. Although I might look at it differently now and say, yeah, that is, you know, burning up calories or, you know, giving me Fitbit points or whatever. But my sister, by contrast, she'd get out there and get on the tractor and, and she'd do all this stuff. Side note, I'm not sure she was just that ambitious and hardworking or he gave her a chance to get a tan. Just saying. That could have factored in. But at any rate, I, I'm sure I learned to mow the grass. I probably did the, you know, the push lawnmower and stuff. I don't recall in my lifetime ever sitting on a riding mower and actually doing a lawn. I just don't. Um, it just didn't happen. For whatever reason, I managed to escape. So when we found ourselves in the situation where the season's not over. My husband needed help because his work partner who, you know, would go, they would just, you know, knock out these lawns right and left because they were both there. You know, one could mow, the other one could do the, the weeds and blow in the, you know, the leaves and all this stuff. And they could probably knock it out quickly. I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg, but my husband started mentioning it to me because I'm kind of in a different flux um, work-wise. And I have a different flexibility. Plus, I don't, I'm not working full-time. So, it made sense to nepotism my way in <laughs> or to say, hey, you know, get off your butt and get out here and, and work, uh, work for a living. And he did offer me money. So, that was good. But it was only going to be for four days because that was, you know, that was, you know, the, the schedule that he had that he needed. Unfortunately, I do have things, and I didn't know about this a, a year in advance. I had a doctor's appointment with my oncologist, which is like an hour away. And so that was going to pull me away for one day. And he said, well, change it, cancel it. And I thought, no, 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 no. I love her. I don't get to see her because I usually see the PA or, or what have you. And I thought, I've had this appointment for a year. So he, okay. It's like, yeah, that doesn't bode well if you just get hired and you tell your boss, even if it's your husband, I can't be there the second day, <laughs> whatever. But I had, you know, a couple of other things that I had to deal with and, and he was gracious and kind. But I really, I was nervous. I was nauseous. I was really anticipating this and thinking, oh, this is not going to go well, especially when a few days before this was going to happen. He took me out on the mower that I would be riding. And, you know, I, I like to think I have dexterity, but not always. Sometimes you'll be pushing one way. You know, that's why living in New York where there was a lot of snow was problematic because they always tell you if you find yourself in icy conditions or snowy conditions and the road is slippery and you start to skid, turn the wheel in the opposite direction of where you're skidding. I don't know where I'm skidding. It's happening so fast. So obviously I'm not good at that. So if I'm on this riding mower and all of a sudden it's like, it's, I have to, it's like, oh gosh, stop, just stop, just stop. But he let me kind of just go in the backyard and <laughs> on our back porch, it's like open at the, at the bottom underneath, but there's like underpinning of siding. And, and it's old and it's, you know, not a huge deal, but I was like, I, I thought I was going to just rip it right off. I didn't, but I sure did run into it. And I said, oh, what's going to happen if I go to someone else's house? And they are not as forgiving. 
<laughs> whatever. But I practiced. It did not look good. I just kind of gave it to God and said, oh Lord, please let me live through this. I was counting down four days of my life. I couldn't wait until it was going to be over. So the upshot was that, you know, I went out and, you know, I did my best. You know, I didn't go out just for a tan and, you know, but I did kind of dress accordingly because I thought, hey, you're out in the sun. Might as well make it benefit you, right? But what's interesting is apparently, let me illuminate you if you don't know, you turn on the lawnmower and then that doesn't just mow the grass. There's like a second thing that you have to activate in order to actually make it mow lawns. Who knew? So I'm going along, going along. I'm, I'm, he is, thankfully, Ron said he would do all the edges and stuff so I don't have to get near any, you know, heavy, heavy things or houses or, you know, anything that I could destroy. <laughs> and so he did all of that. And my main job was just kind of go and, and stay in the lines. You know, if you ever vacuum and you're working on a carpet and it goes, you know, the, the nap of the carpet, it goes one way and then you come back and it goes. So, it, you know, you can see where you've been is what I'm saying. And that's the way it is with a lawn. Oh my gosh, totally different thing. Totally different. A, a, a lawnmower, well, okay, a vacuum cleaner is different than a lawnmower. If you didn't know that, then I don't want you mowing my grass or cutting, you know, or, or vacuuming my carpet because we may be in a heap of trouble. But that's what I was going to try to do. Unfortunately, there were moments when I would get on and I would just be sailing right along and all of a sudden Ron would stop and he'd turn around, you know, and he'd go, and I'd go, and I, oh, I did not pull up the little switch that actually makes the blades cut the grass. So for all intents and purposes, I was just pretending like I was on an ATV freewheeling. I was just taking a ride. I was doing nothing. That could have taken quite a bit longer. Luckily, he figured it out because he thought, is, something, is there something wrong with the blades? Why isn't, why isn't it cutting grass? What's going on? Well, you know, if you put it in gear, so to speak. Well, so I, I figured that out. That helped immensely. And then I was trying to go and be as straight as possible. And sometimes you overlap and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you swing wide and so there's a big gap. There's a whole lot of, of grass that's not been cut or sometimes you're just cutting the same grass again. It's pressurous. It is stressful, I tell you. It doesn't help that I was kind of going parallel to him. So he was kicking up dust and leaves and, you know, at one point my, my lips had been kind of chapped I, not chapped but you know I put on like um car carmax I think is what it's called it's like it's like chapstick and I thought this is not going to be good I'm going to end up with like all this stuff stuck to my face and I'm going to go oh I didn't realize leaves and grass and so I kind of had to wipe that off but he's throwing all this stuff at me and it's hitting me and you know I, when they say a blade of grass that's no big deal, but if it's propelled at you or dirt or little rocks, man, it is like a war zone out there. So it's coming up. It's hitting me. He's kind of kicking up stuff and dust and dirt and stuff. And I had on sunglasses, but it was get I couldn't see. So there were moments, full disclosure, there were moments when I was actually just trying to close my eyes and I was like, Mr. Magoo out there, this does not bode well because then you're, you're like, it's like pea soup. You don't know what you're doing and what you've got. Very, very tricky. But um, the, the mower that I was on was maybe not the heaviest one, but it was probably my speed. So I'm going along, going along, and Ron would go at the end and just kind of, you know, clean up just so it didn't leave streaks and stuff. So my moral of this story is that you know, if I want to go get a job, which I've contemplated now, maybe I'll get a job with the city or the county or the highway maintenance, because as long as someone will go ahead of me and, and you know, lay the groundwork, and then I can just go through and <laughs> do, you know, it's like bumpers when you go bowling, and it's like, as long as I can stay in the lane and not go in the gutter, I'm good. I didn't have to do the ditches. I didn't have to do anything problematic. I didn't tip it over. None of that. Yeah, I think I did a fairly good job. And as long as someone can clean up my messes, hey, money, yay. You know, I don't think anybody will hire me. In fact, my husband actually told me about midway through the week, he said, your employee packet should be coming in the mail. You know, it will have your parking pass and, you know, all the information you need as a new employee. And 
he kind of took a beat and then he said, and, you know, following that, you'll get your dismissal notice. <laughs> so it was probably short term at best. The important thing is I lived through it. Nobody died. No lawns were lost in this whole process. But let me just leave you with this because this made it the best possible week because I was fearful and worried. Ultimately, though, I knew I wanted to help my husband. I wanted to support him. So that drove me in, in kind of seeing it through and saying, okay, I will give it my best. I know I'm not the best. I know there's no way under the sun I'm going to replace anyone that does this job. But I certainly will put my best foot forward and try to learn what I can and do the best job that I can as I do everywhere. But at one point... You know, I, you know, because I, I kept thinking, he's going to yell at me. He's going to say, Phyllis, you know, he's going to laugh at me and think, you know, I'm incompetent and I'm stupid and I'm just not getting it. And, you know, all those insecurities and fears that we can have. And when I expressed that to him at one point, because he, he was always very positive, he was encouraging, he was informing me and kind of educating me and, and nudging me in the right direction. And when I expressed, well, you know, I really thought you were going to, you know, just think that I have just done horribly and be so disappointed. And he said, no, why would I think that? You're helping me. You are helping me and putting forth the effort. And here's the capper. He said, I'm setting you up to succeed. Oh my gosh. If every boss did that, if everyone who's in a leadership or management role would say, I'm setting you up for success, because why does it benefit anyone if you set people up for failure? You hire them and then you want to, you know, crush them? No. This is the mark of a good person, a good man, a good husband, a good leader, a good employer. So short term though it was, I appreciated it. And yes, Phyllis Mower, Lawn Mower, no more. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening and tuning into my channel. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. Be safe, be well. I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye.